before your throne of grace. Father God, if there is anything in our hearts and our minds, our soul and our body, we ask you, dear God, to put it aside, dear Father God, as we try to connect to your spirit this morning. Father God, with, with meekness and humility, dear Lord, we come to you this morning asking you, dear Lord, to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father God, creating us a clean heart and a pure mind. And Father God, we just want to give you thanks. We just want to give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Um, this morning the topic is Jehovah requires meekness and humility. Um, I have to shout out to my pastor before I start. And um, Pastor and Sister Cameron, we just wish you all the best and uh, we ask for a safe journey for you. Um, I considered my pastor to be, be a pastor of humility. I have been sometimes out there with him and the way he conducts himself, I, sometimes my ears get hot because I see people trying to take advantage of him. And he's just humble, 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 and try to work things out. And um, I can remember a few weeks ago when I was in church, um, there was a little girl he called up, and um, I was standing with him um, while the little girl came to him, and when she said to him, um, is the new church going to get a new pastor? And pastor said to her, why you say that? And then they had a conversation because she said, I want you to be the pastor. Just that brings, that show me that this is a man with humility, right? Because no little child like that, you know, we're not going to the principal. We hide away from the principal because, you know, we are afraid of the principal. But when you have someone like that in your midst, right, even the little children, will come. And that is what the, the scripture is talking about. Right? So, Pastor, we, although I'll be traveling this week, but um, I will see you when I come back from our vacation. So, my brothers and sisters, let us not forget that we are all born in sin and shape in iniquity. Once we realize our sinfulness, it is imperative that we depend on God in everything we do. The scriptures explain the greatness in the greatest in the kingdom is one who is like a little child. It is said that a child is forgiven. But a child is not just forgiven. He's totally dependent on his parents. When he needs food, or when he is in pain, he cries to mom and dad. And when he is able to talk, who does he call? The reason why he cries or calls to his parents is because he knows that they can need, meet his needs. They can meet his needs. So friends, let us let humility lead us to sincerely admitting our needs to God. Our God requires of his children meekness and humility. When we humble ourselves and obey his commandments and his statutes, when we, when we humble ourselves and obey the commandments and statutes of our God, is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There are times when we put self before everything, before anything we say or do. I'm thinking something else. Being selfish and haughty only leads to strife and division in the body of Christ. While it is a great, while it is great to be assertive of oneself, 
we should be careful not to be proud and arrogant. It sometimes appears that meekness is a form of weakness, but when you read the New King James Version, it is sometimes translated as gentleness, which also implies weakness. But in order for us to understand the meaning of the word, or of a word, we have to study the passages where it is used. In a little while, we will see that meekness is an attitude or quality of the art. Meekness. First Peter 3 verse 4. You should clothe yourselves instead with the beauty that comes from within. The unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is so precious to God. Meekness is when one willingly submits without resistance to the will and the desires of someone other than themselves. It is also a fruit of the spirit. A meek person is not continually concerned with self. Is or our ways, ideas, and wishes, but is willing to put themselves in second place and submit themselves to achieve whatever is good for others. I would like to stress that meekness is not a sign of weakness of one's character, as some may think, but of strength. I can also assure you that it requires great self-discipline or control to submit to others. Humility, humility is an attitude or quality of mind. The scripture, uh, Acts 20 verse 19, I have done the Lord's work humbly and with many tears. I have endured the trials that came to me from the plots of the Jews. Spiritually one abases himself or herself because they realize the sinfulness and therefore they are willing to depend on God to meet their needs. It is definitely the opposite of pride and haughtiness. Some people because they are blatantly and disdainfully proud, they will refuse every opportunity to be humble. They will try to out-talk and become very loud to avoid admitting they are wrong. And also they will try at all cost to convince everyone around them that their ways and ideas are right. My way or the I way. However, a humble person is willing to submit to the good of the group. A humble person is willing to forgive. We should always work for unity, peace, and harmony. Examples. Uh, there are some examples that are examples of Jesus and Moses. There are two people that walk the face of this earth that have given us great examples, how we should live in meekness and humility. Moses and Jesus. Although Jesus is God himself. I think in order for us to submit ourselves to God's will, we should live like these men. Let us look at some of the examples of being submissive to God's will. Numbers 12, 3, 6, and 7. And I read. 
Now Moses was very humble and more humble than any other person on this earth. And the Lord said to them, verse 6, Now listen to what I say. If there were prophets among you, I, the Lord, would reveal myself in visions. I would speak to them in dreams, but not with my servant Moses. Of all my house, he is the one I trust. When his brother Aaron and sister Miriam began to criticize him because he married a Cushite woman. God heard and summoned all three siblings to a meeting at the tabernacle. The Lord informed them that if they were prophets among them, he would reveal himself in visions and speak to them in dreams. And when you think of those who are very critical of Moses, because there was a lot of... Um, Men, we, we can think about, it was a Korah, they tell me the Bible. Am I right? That, that, uh, that, that um, it was Korah, right? Yeah, that was, um, and all those men that was in high positions, and you would expect them to submit themselves, but they just keep criticizing everything he do, and he was only doing what God wanted him to do. But when you think of um, Miriam and Aaron is, is, is siblings, right, begin to criticize the brother. Then you, 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 you have to wonder, you have to wonder who else, what's next? The Lord informed them, as I said before, that if we were prophets among them, if there were prophets among them, he would reveal himself in visions and speak in dreams. And one can pause to wonder if my own flesh and blood are willing to undermine my leadership, then what more would my enemy do? That is something we need to ponder. And you know, sometimes we always talk about our enemy. Sometimes you think things that you're saying in your house and doing in your house and you expect it to stay inside here. Somebody is taking it out. But anyway, let's get on. Exodus, 16, Exodus 10, 40 verse 16. Moses proceeded to do everything just as the Lord commanded him. There's another scripture, Abraham. 8 verse 5, they serve in a system of worship, and that is only a copy, a shadow of the real one in heaven. For when Moses was getting ready to build the tabernacle, God gave him the warning. Be sure that you make everything according to the pattern I have shown you here on the mountain. These scriptures show that Moses was a very meek person. He was very faithful to God and in God's house. He followed all of Jehovah's commands and built all things according to the patterns that were shown to him. Numbers 11 verse 10 to 15. Moses heard the families. Moses heard all the families standing in the doorways of the of their tents, whining, and the Lord became extremely angry. Moses was also very aggravated, and Moses said to the Lord, "Why are you treating me, your servant, so harshly?" Now the, the, the flesh begin to talk. Because remember, this is a meek man. But sometimes when you're pushed to the point, you even sometimes want to question God. And this is what Moses is doing right now. Why are you treating me, your servant, so harshly? Have mercy upon me. 
Why did I do? What did I do to deserve the burden of all these people? Did I give birth to them? Did I bring them in the world? Why did you tell me to carry them in my arms like a mother carries a nursing baby? How can I carry them to the land sworn to give their ancestors? Where I'm supposed to get meat for all? Where am I, where am I supposed to get meat from all these people? They keep whining to me saying, give us meat to eat. I can't carry all these people myself. The load is far too heavy. If this is how you're going to treat me, just go ahead and kill me. Do me a favor and spare me this misery. Wow. Moses has problems most of us would never submit to. I know that. The people he was chosen to give leadership to constantly complained about his leadership. Even though he was just doing the will of God. Is there any one of us here today that could have withstand this excruciating pressure without being broken into pieces? I need to see the hands. Oh, let's look at some of the examples of Jesus. Philippians 2 verse 8. It said, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Hebrew 4 verse 15. The high priest of ours understands our weakness. For he faced all of the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. 1 Peter 2, 21 and 22. For God called you to do good, even it means to suffer. We have to go through a process sometimes, my brother. There have to be a process. If we, you see, God, God make us to worship him. That's how we were made. And if we don't have that um, connection to our God, then we are going to worship someone else, right? And that can only lead to destruction. So we should always stay connected to divine. Right? So, here is your example. For God called you to do good, even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered for you. He is your example, and you must follow in his footsteps. He never sinned, not, nor even deceived anyone. Another scripture, Matthew 26, verse 39. He went on a little further and bowed with his face to the ground, praying, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want you, I want your will to be done and not mine. These are examples of our Lord and Savior who came to this earth in human flesh. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of dying on the cross. He was tempted like we are today. But he did not sin. That is important. He has surely left us examples that we should follow as we navigate this rough terrain of life, he was ridiculed, spat upon, mocked, and scorned, but he humbly went to the cross for our sins. 
Both Moses and Jesus was expressively noted for their meekness and humility. And both were thoroughly obedient to God. Did they ever get angry? Of course they did. There is a belief that a meek person should not speak out against the errors or they should not get angry. However, at times, both men had to because they wanted to preserve the sanctity of the church. And we see in today's, um, sometimes we don't like I guess we don't like the word rebuke. But sometimes when the man of God have to come to you and talk to you about some of the behaviors he, you know, see that is happening with any one of us, we should humble ourselves and listen. I understand the scripture said that if a man is found in sin, you know, he who is spiritual right, should go over and bring him back within. But he has to be careful, right? And that what a leader have to be careful sometimes. You know, it's like there was a preacher. He preached about the, the Pharisees and the Republican. You know the story when the Pharisees came and started to talk about, you know, I am not like that publican. Did I say Republican? I'm sorry. I'm not like that publican, right? But, you know, <laughs> praise God, praise God, praise God. Yes. And he's saying these things, and after he finished preach the, the sermon, there was a brother in church was there saying, preaching, was there um, praying, say well, loud, I thank you, I'm not like the Pharisees. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's not what you should be praying after you heard a sermon like that. You are finding yourself getting back into that, um, that the way the Pharisees is behaving. So we have to be careful as leaders. Or we, or we, we, we have to, if we have to rebuke somebody, we have to let them understand that it is in love. And you've got to show humility. And they have to get that. If they don't get that, then we're going to have problems as leaders within the body of Christ. And there was also a man named Job, who was of complete integrity. He lost his great wealth and seven sons and three daughters. His body was covered with sore boils from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. His wife asked him, why don't you just curse God and die? Even his friends, oh Lord, accuse him of committing some crime and blame his actions on the evil brought upon him. My brothers and sisters, this all happened when the sons of God came to present themselves to the Lord. And Satan showed up. The Lord asked Satan, where have you come from? He replied, I was patrolling the earth. The Lord asked him, have you considered my servant Job? Satan said, take away all his wealth. And he would surely curse you to your face. He was in for something he didn't understand. The Lord said to him, do to, do, to, do to him as you please, but spare his life. So you see, this was no fault of Job. It was all the devil, right? And that's something we have to be careful of. With humility, once Job said, though he slay me, Yet will I trust him. But I will maintain my own ways before him. 
what he's saying, I will defend myself because I know who I am and I know who I serve. I will defend myself. And sometimes we have to defend ourselves and defend it in humility. And this is what the brother was doing. So saints of God, beware of your accusers. Beware, beware, beware of your accusers. And also be careful, careful of who shows up when you arrive to church to give God praise. Sometimes you get yourself, as sister said, you put on your dandan and you come to church just to praise God. And the devil shows himself up in all different forms. So we have to be careful. The devil's main aim is to distract you and frustrate you from submitting to God's will. How do we apply these examples to our lives? I have some scriptures here. I think we have enough time. We can read all of them. Or you can make note of some of them and look at them. Because there's so much things about humility. And that's all God wants from us. To humble ourselves. To look to him. To look to him. And as long as we look to him, he will supply us with all our needs. He said, according to his riches in glory. Hebrews 12, 2 to 6. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarded its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility endured from sinful people. When you won't, then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not yet given your lives in your struggle against sin. And have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? He said, my child. Don't make light of the Lord's discipline. Here we go again, discipline. And don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord discipline loves, discipline those he loves, and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. Deuteronomy 8, 1 to 5. In verse 15 and 16. Be careful to obey the commandments I have given you today. Then you will live and multiply. And you will enter and occupy the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors. Remember how the Lord your God led you through the wilderness for 40 years. Humbling you and testing you to prove your character. And to find out whether or not you would obey his command, it commands. Yes, he humbled you by letting you go hungry. And then feeding you with manna, a food previously unknown to you and your ancestors. He did it to teach you that people do not live by bread alone. Rather, we live by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And for all 40 years, your clothes didn't wear out and your feet didn't blister or swell. I think about it just as a parent discipline a child. The Lord your God discipline you for your own good. Do not forget that he had taught the great and terrifying, he had led you through the great and terrifying wilderness and its poisonous snakes and scorpions where it was so hot, hot and dry. He gave you water for the rock. He fed you with manna 
in the wilderness, a food unknown to your ancestors. He did this to humble you and test you for your own good. Okay, I have, an, I have a few more scriptures that we're going to read. I'm reading from the New Living Translation, which is, um, it's easy to understand than the King James Version, because I think um, the King James Version was written by a lawyer, so um, I don't read law, so. James 1, 21 to 25. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives. And humbly accept the word of God as planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. But don't forget to listen to God's word, to God's word. You must do what it says, otherwise you are only fooling yourselves. If you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face. In a mirror, you see yourself, you walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully in the perfect law and that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. James 4, 6 to 10. And he gives grace generously, as the scripture says. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So humbles your, humble yourself, yourselves before God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Let there be tears from what you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up in honor. Matthew 16, verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any of you want to follow me, want to, to be my follower, I'm sorry, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross, and follow me. The next scripture is 2 Corinthians 12, 7 to 10. Even though I receive such wonderful relationship from God, even though I have received such wonderful relationships from God, so to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Three times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, the hardships, the persecution, and the troubles that I suffer from Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The thorn that was in Paul's body was placed there by the devil. But God allowed it to remain so that Paul would not overly exalt himself. God allows problems in our lives sometimes not because 
he does not care about us, but he does it to, so that we can depend on him and lean on, and not lean on our own on understanding. So we should trust the Lord with all our hearts and lean not unto our own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct our path. So my brothers and sisters, I, you know, it's not past, so we are here to give the conclusion, right? So you can have enough time to go over these words today. Meekness and humility requires of us to be totally submissive to God. We should be willing to deny self and put God first and others second. That is the godly thing to do. So let us cleanse our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our body of all the junk that will utterly clog the spiritual arteries of our lives. Because this will deny us from the blessing our God has promised us since the beginning of time. Being totally obedient to his commands and statutes will surely help us in our daily lives. I hope whatever was said here today, when you leave today, you will say, yes, there's something I need to change. And I leave you with a promise from God. I think it's Second Chronicles 7 verse 14. My people who are called by my name, if they humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. I'll forgive them of their sins and I'll heal their land. Thank you very much. Thank you. you deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. And the art. Could you stand for me, please? Uh, as we lift our hearts in worship. As we glorify your name, you deserve the glory and the honor. As we lift our hearts in worship, as we glorify your name, for you are great, you do miracles so great. 